There are some serious heavy bugs affecting most players right now. I know it has been a while since I reported news, but here we are again. Get ready for some Fallout 76 breaking news. Hello, hello everyone, welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. So much has been happening since last week, and between playing and making guides for the new events, as well as testing 27 bloodied weapons to understand what's the upcoming nerf raid for my build, I didn't have much time to work on the news. Sorry about that. By the way, feel free to check my feature overview for the upcoming bloodied nerf so you can understand what is Bethesda doing with such weapons. You will be most likely surprised. Now, regarding the news today, I have plenty of things to report, such as a new heavy bug that can benefit everyone, ongoing server issues, a visual bug for mutation effects, PTS updates, and so much more. So sit tight and let me keep you up to date with everything Fallout 76. There is a new bug in the wasteland and I call it one nuke two events because it literally does that. Now, last week when I first noticed this, I was very confused. I only saw one nuke getting launched for the queen and then we had two events live. I just assumed I missed the second nuke or maybe there was a visual bug for the second nuke launch, but that was not the case. Little did I know at the time, huh? Because there is indeed a bug right now, a solid one, it happens every time and a lot of people are using it right now already. As several Reddit posts explain, all you have to do is launch a nuke at a prime fissure when the monogam mine is already nuked. When the nuke hits the prime fissure, it will spawn both events. So in the end, the first nuke at the monogam mine will spawn the colossal problem, and the next two nukes can spawn both events at a time, scorch earth and a colossal problem. If you launch three nukes in the server using this method, you can spawn two queens and three earls. Pretty nice, hmm? This is a bug that clearly can benefit everyone, but you need to be very fast. For instance, you have about 4 minutes max to take down the queen before the colossal problem event shuts down. Anyway, don't get too used to this bug though, because I'm sure Bethesda will release a hotfix very soon, maybe even this week. Who knows? Now, we have a long-term issue which is becoming worse day by day. As Angry Turtle calls them, magic weapons are taking over the wasteland and world bosses are becoming ordinary to kill. Sure, one can argue you can save hundreds if not thousands of bullets this way, but killing bosses in 10 or 20 seconds is no challenge, it's hardly any fun, and on top of that, many players are missing their rewards because they cannot loot the boss or the event rewards do not come fully because they did not deal enough damage for that to happen. I would say one or two out of five boss fights for me in the past five, six days have been like this, like I'm showing you in the footage. I joined the event and the queen or the earl dies within 20 seconds. I did miss a lot of rewards as well, and it's quite annoying, to be honest. I know some of you don't mind using such weapons, but at least be subtle about it. Give everyone a chance to participate, or use them in your own private server when you are not affecting anybody else. It's not right to ruin everyone else's experience just because you can and want to rush the event for yourself using bugged weapons. It's really unfair and I think magic weapon users should think about other players, not just about themselves. So, I read some of your comments saying Class Freak is now broken. It got me worried, so I decided to test to understand what's really going on. Don't worry, it's not broken yet at least. However, there is a visual bug, that's for sure. Sometimes when you first log in or just randomly, your negative effects will display wrongly. For example, here it said my mutations were removing way more attributes than it should with class 
last freak on, but when I checked my attributes tab, everything looked normal. So I went ahead and compared my attributes with and without the perk on, and as you can see, again, everything is working just fine. Well, apart from the visual bug, of course, which can confuse people and lead them into thinking Class Freak is now broken, which is not, thankfully. If you re-equip the perk, the mutation effects should display correctly again. I hope this answers your concerns regarding this perk. Next, we have great news for console players. Finally, the new event featuring the Wendigo Colossus is live for PS4 and Xbox One. It took them a while and sadly, I don't think they managed to fix all the bugs they wanted because on PC, we are still suffering from Doomsday, or in other words, the respawn bug inside the mine. Anyway, the event should be live by the time this video gets released, so feel free to check my complete guide on how to better manage and complete a colossal problem, the new event, as well as the new side quest given by Maggie. For PC players, there's no hotfix today as expected, so don't worry, you can carry on playing as usual. Game crashes are a very old topic and they happen to all of us. However, lately crashes have been affecting servers, not just the game itself. There are over 50 reports from this past week on Reddit alone, and trust me, this is a very serious issue. I have experienced it at least a dozen of times in the past 7 days, and I know for sure it's not my game. If you are not familiar with the issue, let me explain how it works. Out of the blue, your game freezes, it stops responding like a normal game crash. Normally, I close my game when that happens. Maybe that's why I didn't notice this issue sooner. Anyway, if you let the game be for around one minute, controls will come back for one or two seconds and then you will get kicked from the server as a server not responding message pops up. This happened to me a few times where I was in a team with friends and we all got kicked from the server, which means the server basically died. It explains the long freeze. I mean, the game is trying to establish connection with the server and eventually it disconnects because there is no response for so long. So yes, Fallout 76 servers have been crashing way more than usual since the latest update and especially the hotfix. This is everything but great news for all of us. Alright, I did not follow up with the Fortifying Atlas news last week, but we did it. We achieved all the goals for Project Alpha, and as such, Bethesda has been releasing the community rewards. The double score daily event has just finished, but there is one more event starting on August 26, which is the bonus challenge week. For all of you who are still farming score to unlock all the Season 1 rewards, I highly recommend you to log in during this event event to access these bonus daily and weekly challenges. It's probably your last chance to get everything you want before the season ends in about 3 weeks. Remember, Bethesda said season 1 will end in mid-September. We don't have an exact date yet, but at least you have a clue about the deadline. For everyone else who is rank 100 already, well, tough luck, there's nothing for us to gain with this event. It is what it is. A colossal problem, the new event, or should I say a colossal bug? We started with a lot of different bugs, such as players crashing while trying to join the event. We also had lag spot reports, and finally, the most common and persistent bug, the respawn issue. Basically, whenever you die during a colossal problem, you have a very high chance to trigger this respawn bug, which prevents you from being active in the fight, and if you try to respawn outside the mine, you will lose all the rewards. Besides the Earl boss loot and the chest loot, you can also lose the event rewards if you respawn in a nearby location. You can't respawn at the mine itself because it's inside a nuked area, hmm. but if you respawn on a teammate outside or at your survival tent around the mine, then you won't lose the event status. However, the safest thing to do here is to stay bugged until other players complete the event. 
because most of the time respawning outside means you lose every single reward you could get from it. And yes, you can't go back inside the mine, the entrance is always blocked if you respawn outside. Even if the event is still on your interface, it doesn't matter. Now, this is extremely frustrating because you can't play at ease, you are constantly thinking about how you cannot die, otherwise you will be punished, really punished, and you are forced to choose between being stuck and look into the void for minutes for some rewards or respawn outside and lose everything you could ever get. The worst part is that the respawn bug is live since the release day, so it is unlikely Bethesda will find a solution for this anytime soon. For now, the best advice I can give you is to heal your rats, make sure you don't die, because if you do and you get my trigger rate, you will get bugged all the time, my friend, and trust me, the despair eventually kicks in and you just log out or you go do something else, screw the rewards. I did that a few times, honestly, and yeah, bugs. Let's move on. Last Friday, Bethesda released a new patch for the Fallout 76 public test server. Spoiler alert for this point, by the way. There are almost 30 patch note lines, but most of them are minor bug fixes hardly worth mentioning. The two main highlights are the legendary perk system changes, but as the decrease the amount of perk coins you need to upgrade legendary perks. For example, rank 1 costed 100 perk coins before, now it costs 50. The changes seem balanced and I think the majority of the players agree this was necessary before it required way too many perk coins. Anyway, the second highlight of this small patch is about daily ops, Bethesda has fixed several issues and bugs related to this new experience. Again, mostly minor adjustments. More PTS news for you. This one is not a spoiler though. In the latest Inside the Vault news, Bethesda announced a new exclusive reward for PTS testers. I can imagine most of you missed the small letters saying you can earn a pennant if you help testing the new Daily Ops system. All you have to do is log into the PTS, of course, and then you have to complete at least 8 Daily Ops to unlock this new item. You have until mid-September to meet the requirement. If you do, you will get this new reward when Update 22 gets released into the official servers. So hurry up, you can prepare yourself for this new experience while you do it, because soloing is not such an easy task. I won't spoil anything else. Okay, a few days ago I posted something funny about mole rats from the PTS. This is a minor spoiler, so watch at your own risk, but overall a mole rats will scale to level 100, just like any other enemy really, which means mole rats are about to become much, much stronger. In the PTS, I found two of them fighting a prime scorpion, and they were very tight, so they kept the Primal Cuts event hostage by fighting miles away from the event for a minute or something alike. These things are no joke, and it makes me wonder if it's really supposed to be that way, because it makes no sense. A rat challenging a scorpion? Really? A rat that needs 10 hits to die? Mm, I surely hope not, but so far it seems to be going that way. In case you haven't read the latest hotfix notes, here's a reminder for you. The Secret Service Armor Lamps got an update, oh yes. Since last week, the Deep Pocket mod finally got released and it's now live at Rex at Vault 79. You can buy it for 500 gold bullion and then, well, you can get up to 40 extra carry weight from your lovely limbs alone. Ah, I missed going around with over 500 carry weight. Finally, it was about time. I really missed this mod, I'm sure a lot of you did too, so make sure to grab it and have fun. 
Well, with the latest hotfix, Bethesda also brought back a feature they randomly removed with update 21. They disabled the ability to change plane walls into door frame walls. I don't know why. Now, this feature is back for good and you can freely edit or change your plane walls into anything you want. Once again, into a window wall or a door wall. So yeah, I know the building issue is far from being solved, but this is a very good progress. So let's see what Bethesda does next. Before I conclude the video, I've been finding a lot of naked NPCs and even players in the past few days. It's really weird. Every now and then I come across these bugged naked NPCs, which are always human, funny enough. Does this happen to you as well? Do let me know. Anyway, that's everything for this video. The Brotherhood Project Bravo should start soon and I'm confident plenty of news will arrive later this week. So stay tuned for more Fallout 76 news. I am Marta Branco, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed what you saw and well, you can always support me even further by checking the links below the video. That's really everything for now, so I will see you very very soon in the next one. Until then, take care, adios, bye bye!